Good morning. We're in Mem Zayin Amid Aleph from the top. Amar Rava. Hani Tarte Bue, Dismiche Lahadade, Las Lahu Bidikusa. If you have two blisters on the lung, these are not scabs, these are blisters on the lungs, and uh, obviously you're checking them after the animal is dead and after it's been shechted. The blisters are from liquid between the meat and the skin. So if there are two blisters, there is no bedika. That means there's no point of doing a bedika because even if through the bedika and through immersing the lung in water, you can tell that it's still airtight, it's a trefa, because the fact that there are two blisters next to each other shows that there was a puncture. And Rava knew that two adjacent blisters result from a hole which around the whole two blisters form. And even if it doesn't bubble at this point, it's a trefa because once the lung is punctured, we assume that it is, we assume that it's going to uh, remain a trefa. Chada um mischazia ketarte. Let's say you have one blister, but it looks like two. You're not sure whether it's one blister or two blisters. So again, if it was one blister, it would be fine because we assume that, again, it's not necessarily a hole and therefore it's not going to be a trefer. But if it's two blisters, then we know for sure that it's a hole. So what's the story? My seen on silver, you bring a thorn, uvazin on law, you have to pierce what you're not sure is one blister or two blister. And again, common sense, yishav chan la If all of the fluid, all of the pus drains out, then you'll know that it's only one blister, and it's going to be kasher. Chadahi ukshera, v'ilo, tarte ninhu utrefa. But if it's only half of it comes out when you use the little thorn, then obviously it's two different blisters, and only one of them drained, and therefore you'll know that's actually going to be trefa. So that's the blisters on the lung. For Amar Rava, Rava also said, Cham she'unei isla l'reya. A lung has five lobes. There's three cranial lobes on the right, and two cranial lobes on the left. Apa klape gavra. When the animal's face, when the bottom is facing a person, and it's being hung from its legs, like I told you at the Shrita house, they hang them from the legs. Tlasa miyamina vetarte mismala. So there are three on the right and two on the left. That means in general, um, the right lobe, here, let me just show you the picture here. So we're going to look at it from the underside, right? So from the underside, this is really the way it looks, because again, this is when it's hanging upside down. If you're looking at a regular animal, right side up, you have the two lobes over here and the three lobes over here. This is the right side, this is the left side, because again, my left is facing its right. But since it's hanging upside down, so when something is upside down, if I'm facing you, then my right is your left and your left is your right. But if you were hanging upside down, then your right is my right and my left is your left. So at the end of the day, this animal is hanging upside down. So when we look at the picture, the right is the right, is our right, and the left is the left. So the right, there are three cranial lobes on the bottom, and there's a main lobe on top. And on the left, there's two cranial lobes on the bottom and one lobe on top. That's why, again, since upside down, this is towards the head. But when you look at it from the flip side, you look at it from the flip side, so this is considered to be the underside. Because, again, this is the underside of the animal. If you look at it from the top, it's just going to be called, they call it the dorsal side. This is the top. So this is what it looks like from the top. The top, it just looks like two big things. When you flip it on the inside, you see that there's different three and two. So that's what it looks like over here. Again, three on the right, two on the left. But from the top, it just looks like two big ones on the right and on the left. So the Gemara says that we're dealing with over here, where from the flip side again, from the underside of the animal, you have five lobes, plus a mismala, three on the right and two on the left. That's normal. Chaser or yatir or chalif trefa. If one of the lobes is missing, or if there's an extra lobe, or they're inverted, that means if they're three on the left and two on the right, then it's going to be a trefa. Because we know then that something is off. If it's missing, then it's considered to be deficient. And if it's extra, we'll see in a second that sometimes when something is extra, it's also considered to be deficient. Too much is considered to be a problem as well. So if it's missing extra or inverted, then it's a trefa. Says the Gemara, so there's a case of an extra lobe that came before Mremer. Again, instead of having three on the right and two on the left, plus the main lobe on the left and the main lobe on the right, there seemingly was an extra lobe. Also, we're going to see in a second, from the underside, there's a lobe right in the middle called the Ininusa Devarda, the small rose-like lobe. So you got the main lobe, main lobe, three, two, and then on the actual, Ke'ilu, on the actual trachea, 
which again, which all the air is coming in, there's another low here. So if you want to calculate it, it's really a total of four, and three is seven, and one is eight. So if you have an extra one, says the Gemara, so they came to Meremar, and they asked him for a ruling, have a Yosef Racha above it. So Racha was sitting at the entrance of Meremar's house, so the butcher goes into Meremar, and he asked him the question. He comes out, Amar Lay, my Amar Lach, what did Meremar tell you? Amar Lay, Achshur Ani Allah, he permitted it. Now, obviously, the guy was a little bit taken aback, Ravacha, because we know that Rava just said that if you have an extra lobe, that I means seemingly again here there were four or three, four on the right, three on the left, you have an extra lobe, so Lamais is going to be treif. So why would Meremar say that it's mutter? Amar Lay, Hadar Aile Lekame. If you don't get the answer you want from the rabbi, so what do you do? You go ask again. You ask a different rabbi usually, but you go ask the rabbi again. So Meremar says, go in and ask him again. So he goes and asks him again. And when he says, Amar Leis, so Meremar says back to him, I know that there is Ravacha sitting at the entrance. Go tell Ravacha who's sitting at the front who just sent you in to ask me again. That the Lach is not like Rava when it comes to an extra lobe. And therefore, Lamaisa, even though Rava says that an extra lobe is going to be a trefa, the Lach is that an extra lobe is actually going to be kosher. Says Gemara of a honey mealy. This is the kaima bidara deune. This is where the extra lobe, again, where we're going to say it's kosher, it's in the row of lobes. Like I told you just now, when you have the three and the two. So if the three has four, or the two on the left have three, that's going to be okay. But if you have an extra lobe in the middle, like I mentioned again, you have the three over here and the two over here and the one big and one big, but you have this one rose-like lobe over here, which we'll talk about in a second. If besides to this rose-like one, there's another extra lobe in the middle between the two sets, that's going to be a problem. One second. Says the Gemara, Likaima bidara de'une, ava bene bene trefa. So again, if in the row of three or two, there's an extra one, that's not a problem. Somehow, again, they knew that that's not going to be a trefa. But if there's an extra one in between the two rows either on the belly side, again, the underside, ventral side, or the top dorsal side, if there's an extra row seemingly, again, on the trachea itself, it would be right here on the actual trachea, so if there's an extra lobe, besides for that rose-like lobe, which is on, only seen on the underside view, then it's going to be a trefa. It so they wanted to make a tray, even though it added one extra lobe in between. And he says, one second, you're mixing up. All animals that go ahead and graze in the meadows have this extra lobe. Rather, what? The butchers call it a small, varda is a rose, a small rose like rose. A small rose-like lobe. So again, it comes out that you have a total of three on the right and the main lobes. So you have the main lobe on the right and then three cranial lobes. You have the left lobe and then two cranial lobes. That's a total of five, six, seven. And then on the underside, you have another small rose-like lobe, eight. If there's an extra one on the right or on the left, the three or the two, because you're not going to have an extra main lobe. If you have an extra three or two, it's going to be okay. If you have an extra one in the middle, which is where the small rose-like lobe is, then it's going to be a problem. And again, if you have an extra one on top at all, where there is no rose-like lobe, then it's going to be uh, a problem as well. Okay, you learn this. You sound very smart when you speak to people. Next time they ask you about cranials and about lobes, you'll know what they're talking about. Yes? I have a problem. Uh, it's supposed to be that the animal wouldn't live a, a year. Okay. So I, I can't see some of these being a problem with that living a year. For instance, what do you mean? a blister on, on, a, on a lung... So the Gemara is telling you that a blister on a lung is not a blister on a lung. The Gemara is telling you that two blisters on a lung together means that there's a hole in the actual lung. A hole in the lung is dying within a year. One blister on the lung doesn't necessarily mean that there's a hole. So it's not that the blister per se means that it's a problem. It's that the blister shows that there was a hole that would have killed the animal within a year. That's the shot. So it's just a sign. It's not the reason, it's a sign. That's what we're trying to figure out here. Again, we don't know... Because either if you either see the hole, you don't see the hole. We're saying that you have to be able to figure out otherwise these extra lobes. The point is, so you don't say, well, who cares? Like an extra lobe. Yeah. So Gemara is telling you that an extra lobe in the right or left is not going to be an issue. An extra lobe in the middle is going to cause the animal to die. So what are you saying that that must have, that must have grown later on? Or something? That what? That that extra lobe must have grown later on. Or something? Again, so I'm assuming the Gemara, yeah, the Gemara knew that uh, by looking at it after they knew what kind of uh, it's like a sirch, I guess. So they knew what kind of lobes would. Uh, would be a problem. Again, it's not, it's not so uncommon, somebody was pointing out, it's not so uncommon for animals to get uh, tuberculosis, to get uh, bronchitis and things like that. And these are all things that, again, could cause their death without us actually seeing it. It's not like he's going to the doctor, he doesn't have a medical record. So when you open him up, you're able to see whether he had something that would have been an issue or not. The honey mealy being gavai, 
And again, that's on the underside, like I was saying to you. When we're talking about the small rose-like lobe, which is okay, that's only the extra lobe in between, which is on the underside. But on the top, even if it's tiny, like the leaf of a asa, of a myrtle, it's not going to be okay, it's going to be a trefa, because again, you can only have that extra rose-like lobe on the underside of the animal. Okay, other problems with the lung. Amar Raphram. If the lung is like a piece of wood, it's trefa. What does that mean, a piece of wood? Either it can mean that it looks like a piece of wood, or it feels like a piece of wood. Iga da'amri b'chazusa, the way it looks. Iga da'amri b'gishta, right? These are all words that we know. Gishta, like to feel, the way that it feels. Iga da'amri d'neficha. What does it mean that it looks like a piece of wood? That means it's bloated. It's blown up. It's whitish, like a piece of wood. If it's white... The lung, it's a problem. Vigadami de pechiza, not the way that it looks, the way it feels, it's hard. If it's hard like a piece of wood, it just means that it's a problem. Vigadami de shia de lesla chitucha de uni. And others say that it means that it's a piece of wood, that it's smooth. If it's smooth, it doesn't have any lobes at all. It doesn't have a division of lobes. You just look at it, it looks like one long thing without having the different lobes. That's going to be a problem because that means there's a problem with the animal. Amarava. Ke kuchalak shera. Kuchal is like what the women put on their eyes. That's a blue paste. If it's blue, it's kosher. Kidiosa trefa. If it's like dried dio, like dried ink, dried black ink, it's a trefa. This comes from Hilchas Nidin, Amr of Chanina. Shachar adamu ela shalaka. Black is red that's been deox- deoxygenated. That means that if you look at Hilchas Nidin, for instance, if you do a bedika, so we know that red is a problem. If a woman shows me a bedika that's black, that could be a problem as well. Brown is not necessarily a problem. Black is a problem because we assume that black and red are, I think black is right next to red on the color spectrum, that black is red that has uh, lost its oxygen, that has degenerated. And therefore, again, if you see a black lung, you assume that it was a red lung. If it was red and it remained red, then we assume that it could be reversible, like we said, as other colors. The whole point is that when we look at the color, if it's a certain color, we assume that it can no longer be reversible and it's going to die. So black is red that's become degenerated and it is no longer reversible. It's a diseased lung and therefore it's going to further deteriorate and rupture and the animal is a trefa. Yeruka ksherami de Rabbi Nassan. If it's yarok, green, it's kasher, based on Rabbi Nassan. Aduma ksherami de Rabbi Nassan. And red is also, so red and green, we assume are temporary. Red, as we'll see, is too much blood. Green is too little blood. But again, we assume that that's just a temporary discoloration, and the mice of the red will have the blood go away, the green will have more blood come, and therefore, if you see them red or green, you can assume that they're not trefas. Where do we see this? From a very interesting case of Mila. What was the case that came before Rabbi Nassan? Aduma Ksherami de Rabbi Nassan de Tanya. Rabbi Nassan Omer, Pam Achatz Alachti Lekrache Hayam. I went overseas. Basi Ishal Achatz Lafane Shemala Ben Arishon Vemeis Sheni Vemeis. She had two children who died as a result of Bris Mila. Shlishi Heviyatu Lefanai. So there's a different of, of, of opinion whether you have to have three children, Rechman Alatzan, die in order to not do Mila, or you just have to have two children. So she had two died. She still wanted to do, let's assume you only had to have two, and then she's Potter for Mila. She still wanted her third son to have Mila. So what did she do? She brought him before Rabbi Nassan. He looked at the baby and said, Re'isav Shaya Edom, he's too ready, he has too much blood. Amar la biti hamtini lo bala bodama. It's like the opposite of jaundice. Wait until he has the red color going away, until all the excess blood goes away. And Lamaisa, when it's absorbed back into him, you can circumcise him. Zilo malo tovachaya. So she waited. Seemingly, she didn't wait the first time, which is why the baby died. She waited till the red went away. By and then they called him Nasan Abavli after him to thank him for having her live, the baby live. Shupamacha Salachtu Medinas Kaputkaya, Cappadocia. I don't know where that is. Basa Shemala Ben Arishon Vemei Sheni Vemei Shlishi Aviatu Lefanai Reisiv Shaya Yarok. This time he was green from a lack of blood. He tzatzi bovalayabo dambris. I examined him and saw there was no blood. So no blood, first of all, is a problem because you can't do dam bris. You can't do a tough as dam if he doesn't have any blood. And second of all, just in terms of medically, it's dangerous to do a bris on, an, on a baby that doesn't have the right amount of blood. Amartila, so he said, biti hamtini lo achiipo bo damo. Wait until the blood starts to flow. Himtina lo malo so So she did, and then he lived. Vayukorna so natin above the alshimi. But again, what you see from here for our purposes is that a red or green slash yellow, well, we'll see, but green discoloration of the lungs, similar. Li is going to be a temporary thing, just like by Mila, and only black is going to be a problem. Amar of Kahana Kikavda Kshera, if the lung looks like a liver, 
i.e. it looks like a liver or feels like a liver, it's kosher. Kibisra trefa, if it looks or feels like meat, it's trefa. Visimanecha, and again, this is a tradition that Chazal had. How did, how did they know? They had a tradition that if it looks or feels like meat, it's going to be a problem. If it looks or feels like the liver, it's going to be okay. How do you want to remember this? Ubasar basada trefa. The Pasuk of trefa says ubasar basada. So basar, if it looks like basar, it's going to be a problem. If it looks like the liver, it won't be. Amar sama bredi rava. Hirea didamya kikivush kivshuta uchimorika chagombeas atrefa. If it's yellow, like hops to make beer or saffron or an egg, any shades of yellow, that's going to be a problem. Eli rukig shere hechidam. How do you have yarrow that's going to be kosher? Kikarti, green. So again, that's what we had before. Yellow is a problem. It's interesting because we say jaundice is yellow. Yellow is a problem. Green or red is not a problem. Karti, like a leek, is not going to be a problem. Amar Ravina. Atum Berea. If there's a clogged part of the lung, which air does not penetrate. So the problem is you inflate the lung afterwards, right? That's how they look for, uh, that's how they look for uh, sirchas as well. But you inflate the lung, and part of it is not even inflating. Forget about it. Usually the, the lung inflates, and then you have to check for the sirchas the blisters and the like that are on the uh, the surface. But over here, the, blow, the, the, the lung's not even inflating. So what's the possibility? One possibility is that the lung is clogged. If it's clogged, a temporary clog, it's not a problem. Another possibility is that the lung is diseased. If the lung is diseased, then lamaisa, if you have, doesn't matter what you do, if it's not going to blow up because it's diseased, then it's considered to be a trefa, and it's a problem. So if it's, how do you check? So mycena and sakina vakarinola. So again, you go ahead and you blow air into it, and then you bring a knife and you cut the surface, the membrane of the lung. If there's pus that comes out, then you know that it was clogged because of the pus, and it's going to be kosher. It's fascinating how they do this. If the pus doesn't come out, then we still want to make it kosher. So let's see, we put a feather or some spit in the place that you made the little incision, and then you inflate it again. If it starts to flutter, then you know that Again, there's air getting through the clog, and you're able to unclog it by just cutting it. Below trefa, but if it doesn't flutter and there's no air, then you know that even though you tried to unclog it, you couldn't unclog because it wasn't a problem of being clogged. The actual lung had collapsed. There was a problem with the lung. It was diseased, and that's why it's not blowing up. No matter how much you blow it, even if you unclog it, and that means that it's a trefa, and the animal's going to be usser. Armor of Yosef. So we spoke about blisters. What about a scab? So if you remember, we mentioned that a scab is not going to be okay. A scab is still going to be a trefa because a scab, we assume, is just temporary and it's going to come off. Krum shalom achmas maka ain't a krum. If you have a scab, is not proper. It's not considered to be a scab. It's not an effective seal. It's going to eventually come off. And therefore, again, part of the reason that sirchas is going to be a problem, it's going to be a trefa. Rav Yosef says something that we've said before yesterday. Rav Yosef, harreya da'afsha. Let's say the lung is making a hissing noise. Well, you can't find exactly where the hissing is coming from. If you know where it's coming from, then you put a feather, a spit, or straw, if it flutters, and you see that air is coming out of the lungs, then the animal is a trefa. Again, the difference between this case and the other case where we said that if you come along and it flutters, then it's kosher, is because over there, you made the hole yourself, right? Over there, it was clogged. You made the hole in order to see if you could unclog it. Then if it flutters, and you know that it was because it was clogged, then it's going to be kosher. Here, it's making the fluttering before you made any holes, and if it flutters without you making any holes, then it means that the hole was there originally. That's the difference. If it flutters, then it's going to be a trefa, because it means there's a hole there. If it doesn't flutter, that means there's no air escaping. But you don't know where the hissing is coming from. It means they're still hissing. So, We said you take lukewarm water. Why? You put the lung in it. You can't put hot water because it'll shrivel it up and it might seal up the hole. You can't put cold water because it's going to make the hard lung. It's going to make the lung hard. You use lukewarm water. If it bubbles, it's trefa, because that means that there's clearly a puncture there. If it doesn't bubble, it's kosher. I understand if you have a hissing sound and there's no hole, so where's it coming from? He says that there's still a space between the outer membrane and the inner membrane, like the example we used of the, uh, the eggshell, where we said the eggshell is the outer membrane and the white stuff on top of the actual white part of the egg is the inner membrane. There's a hole. There's a little bit of space. When you open up an egg, there's a little bit of space. It's not directly on top of the white part of the egg. It's a little bit of space, so the, the hissing can be coming from there, even if there's no hole in the actual membranes. 
Says Mar This is interesting. So now we say, let's assume that the outsides, we said that if the both outsides have a hole, a puncture, it's going to be a problem because the animal's going to die. Let's say the outside, just imagine an egg, let's say the two outside layers are totally intact, but the inside starts to dissolve. The inside of the egg starts to dissolve. The inside of the lung starts to dissolve. You could pour it like water. Again, the inside of the lung was seemingly hard or soft. It was soft. Now it starts to dissolve. So I would think for sure it's going to be a trafe. It says, no, an animal can live with a dissolved lung as long as the outside doesn't have any holes. Very interesting. Again, I don't know if it's going to live forever, but it can live for at least a year. Alma kasavar chisar mebethim lo shmei chisar. And you see that if there's a deficiency on the inside, it's not a trefa, because here you have an internal deficiency. It's the reason it's considered to be a deficiency is because if the lung is this big and the lung was taking up, let's say this is the entire lung, and the inside, when it was soft, whatever, was taking up the entire lung, when it starts to dissolve, like a piece of ice. An ice is this big, when it starts to dissolve, the water... Is much, is, is, is much less. So it's considered to be a chisarin in the inside of the lung because the whatever was solid, quote-unquote, is no longer solid. So it says a Gemara, Al b'fnim lo You see that it's only a problem with the puncture on the outside membranes and the inside membrane, but not on the inside of the actual lung. Eisver Rabbi Ava Le'ula, Harei Shenikvo is going to be a trefa if it's punctured or it's deficient. Well, what's punctured? Seemingly punctured means on the outside. Deficient means this case where the lung itself inside dissolves, and yet it says it's a trefa. How can you say it's kasher? My chasra, what does deficient mean? If you say that deficient, the second case means mi bachot, hainu nikva. That's what punctured means. Punctured means that it's missing from the outside. So seemingly punctured is the outside. El ala mi bifnim. Punctured is the outside. Deficient is on the inside. Gzimtait. Ushma mina chisar mi bifnim shmei chisar. And you clearly see that if it's dissolved on the inside, it's going to be a problem. It's an, deter- in, it's an internal deficiency and it's going to be a problem, even though you just said it's not a problem. It says no. Le ola ola on bachot. No, the internal part, if the lung itself is a little bit um, deficient. If the lung itself dissolves a little bit, it's not a problem. So what does it mean, punctured versus deficient? If they're both talking about the outside, what's the nafkamina? It's not true. No, there's another opinion. We said that if there's a puncture on the two outer membranes, it's going to be a problem. Rabbi Shimon was makil and said it's not going to be a problem until not only are the two outside membranes punctured, but the bronchi are punctured as well. So what does it mean? Says the Gemara, what does he mean? He means, honey, mili nekev de les Ah, that's a nekev that's not missing any substance. We said that you could put a needle into a piece of skin and it could either be taking out the skin or it could just like sort of be pushing the skin in, but the skin is still there. So when he says that it's okay unless there's a puncture all the way to the inner bronchi, that's when there's no surface missing. When there's no skin missing, not skin here, but there's no surface <laughs> missing from the puncture to the lung. However, but if there's a nekev that has a chisaron on the outer membrane, on the two outer membranes of the lung, then it's going to be a problem. So what do we mean over here when we say that it dissolves? Yes, if the inside of the lung dissolves, it's going to be okay. So what do we mean over here that if it's pierced or it's missing, what does that mean? How could they both be talking about the outside? Well, it's pierced is talking about most of the mandiamars. Most mandiamars say pierced is a problem, even pierced on the two outer membranes. When it says that it's dissolved, that's within Rebbe Shimon, who says that when it's just pierced on the outside, it's not a problem unless it goes into the bronchi. When it says that it's dissolved, Rebbe Shimon agrees that this piercing on the outside, when I said it's okay, that's only if nothing is missing. None of the skin or nothing of the surface is missing. But I agree that if it's dissolved, not the inside, but if the pieces of the outside membrane are missing, if they're a little bit dissolved, then even I agree that it's going to be a problem, even if it's only a puncture on the outside and not on the inside. But it comes out that according to everybody, the inside, which is dissolved of the lungs, is actually going to be okay. Rabbi Hanan Yechalash. Rabbi Hanan, he got sick. There's only one, always one Shmedrik who says, okay, he's dying, but I still have a Shiloh. Aisu Kamei Reyash and Ishbacha Kikiton. So the guy comes, he's dying on a deathbed. They're all saying to him, and the guy comes, I have a shayla about my lung. He says, okay, obviously it's a little bit of a different time. Back then, they were happy to help. Today, they would kick you out of the room. Achshara, he said it was kosher. Who was that? That was Rabbi Hananya. Says that it's kosher. Amarava, who dekai made symphonos. When I say that it's, uh, you can't just walk in at 9, 12 and start laughing. Well, come on, it's no, almost, uh, of course we're up to. It's almost, the day's almost over. Says the Gemara, it's almost time for Mincha Mendel. Says the Gemara, Amarava, who dekai made symphonos. When we said that the internal lung, which dissolved, again, over here he saw that it was pouring back and forth. The internal lung was dissolved, and yet it was kosher. What did he say? Amarava, 
which is what we just said. The internal lung is fine. As long as if it's dissolved, it's fine. But Amarava, Amarava just clarifies, we decimate symphonos. When we say that the internal lung can be dissolved, that's only if the bronchi are still intact. The bronchi, again, over here, if you look at it, besides for the lobes, you have the bronchi are like the nerves of the, of the lungs. So as long as the nerves are still there, even if the outside part of the lungs have started, if you want to call the lobes. So that's why now it makes sense. The lobes have started to dissolve and they're like watery, but the nerve part, the bronchi, are still there. So it's still working. Says the Gemara, Amalei Ravach, Abrei, Deravel, Ravash, just to clarify this, how do you know when you open up the animal if the bronchi are dissolved or not, right? If the actual thing became a little bit liquidy, it pours like water, how do you know if the nerves of the lung are still functioning? Amalei, what you do is my sinan saw de kunya, you bring like a glazed earthenware basin, which is clear, you literally pour the lung into it. If you see white streaks in the lung, then you know that it's possible because then that means that that's the leftover bronchi which have dissolved. If there are no white streaks, the animal is kosher because that means that the bronchi are still intact. Obviously, without knowing exactly how the Matthias works, but again, the bronchi need to be intact and that makes sense so because then if the lung, because we have to say, how could it be that the lung dissolves and it's going to live? Because if the bronchi are still intact, so then Lamaisa, it'll still live. Amr of Nachman, Reashin Imoko, Krumshala, Kayim, Kshera. If a lung decayed, like we're saying, but now over here it's not that it dissolved, now it decayed. What does that mean? That in the other case, it dissolved. In this case, it didn't dissolve, but some of it decayed. There's literally like an empty pocket in the lung. Now it's missing part of the lung. Not only the missing, but it, part of it decayed. So as it's still kosher. As long as the krimshala, as long as the membrane, similar to where we said a puncture in the membrane will be a problem, but the internal part that dissolves a little bit will not be a problem. So to over here, if the internal part is still, um, even if the internal part decayed a little bit, if the external part is intact, then Lemaise said it's kosher. It's fascinating. It sounds like the lung can function even if the inside of the lung starts to decay or starts to dissolve. As long as it's sort of uh, still sealed tightly and the trachea is going into the lung, somehow... It's still, right, you talk about a collapsed lung, usually you think the guy's going to die. But seemingly when it comes to an animal, again, maybe it won't last too long, but it sounds like this type of collapsed lung, the animal can still live, assuming that it still has certain function of the lung. If the lung decayed internally, but the membrane remains intact, even if you can literally hold a quarter lug of liquid in the missing part of the lung, it's going to be kosher. So that's one case. Nitla... If the womb of an animal is removed, it's still kosher because it doesn't have to have a womb in order to be able to function and to be able to live. If the animal's liver became wormy, this was a maisa. The people came up from Asya to Yavne on three regalim in a row. They wanted to get a Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was living, Asya was outside Eretz Yisrael. The Sanhedrin was in Yavne at the time, and they wanted to get a ruling, and for whatever reason, they didn't answer them the first two times. So, Regal Shlishi, he to rule him. On the third Regal, the Sanhedrin permitted this animal, and therefore, even if the entire liver becomes wormy, the animal is permitted, since the Gemara seemingly is saying that the animal can recover from such a condition.